Hello and welcome to the Battle in Barrow and in this video uh, we're going to look at some or start a small mini series on DM tips and tools and so forth and in this one we're going to look at the uh, my DM folder. Uh, you may think that I would start out looking at the uh, DM screen which seems to be the eponymous DM tool but most of the time all that is is just easy access to chart lookups uh, to say if you're flipping through books to look up charts i am going to be showing you mine because mine's a uh, a custom built one so we're going to look at that but first i thought we'd look at something much more useful for a dungeon master and that is a dungeon masters folder which just contains loads of useful information about the adventure the region the players are in and whatnot so let's have a look what's in mine and this is it. So I have it divided up using these tab dividers. We shall have a look. The first thing is probably not what ever anyone will have apart from me is this. This is a list of uh, sound effects and ambient noises. Um, I wrote a soundboard, piece of soundboard software. I'm a computer programmer by trade. Mainly because I didn't want to use better pieces of software like Sirenscape, which is out there. Because the reason behind this is because Sirenscape, I needed a, I would need a screen in front of me like a phone, which I don't like having in front of me. I am very paper, I'm a paper orientated, don't like technology in front of me. Uh, and Sirenscape, you'd need a phone. Um, you'd even need a tablet, a phone, uh, you, or whatnot, and the sound would come out either come out of the. Uh, the phone itself or you can use the master con remote master control thing which is to me it's a bit buggy anyway uh, and still have to have a phone what i'd like it to have a piece of software is to do something like what i've written myself which is to have hotkeys and with that i can use a uh, wireless uh number pad which i've uh stuck bits of paper over to let me know what button does what so this is sound 1 to 13 I can have up to 13 sounds this is so I can start and stop OBS recording and change cameras so I have this so here I have a list of 30 numbers which correspond to these keys and they're just like different loops and sound effects so most of these are fairly generic that I have all the time wilderness town temple tavern castle interior I then have the adventure ambience in this case dungeon uh, a dungeon ambience and I have lots of sort of monster noises and effects noises here and some battle music. So most people won't have that, but I have that. I have it at the front of my folder just so I can quickly refer to as a reminder. Next up, uh, Y42, because that is the answer to everything. I have lots of scrap paper. This is scrap graph paper that um, I can use at a push if I need it to make any notes or what have you. Um, I also, my players have their own scrap paper, but if they run out, I can quickly give them some more. So that's what that is. That's just at the front. Now we're getting into the nitty gritty now. Um, so the first tab is town and region. So uh, when my players have sort of set up some sort of home base in a town, I will go off and detail that town. Um, I'm setting mine in uh, the uh, known setting, uh, Keramikos, Grand Duchy Keramikos. So I had this here just when I first started the campaign uh, just to read to the players, just to give them a bit of background. Uh, I also have the notice board in the town I need to update. This is all well out of date now. I need to add some more notices to it. So if, they, if I need to get some adventure hooks going, I can fill the notice board. Uh, see my video about running a sandbox for more information. I also have uh, common questions for NPCs. So if players talk to any NPC and they ask them sort of common questions about the town, region, and what have you, I've got that detailed here. Next, I have continuation of the common questions, and that's the rumor section. Both true and false rumors, because uh, not every rumor you would hear is actually true. So I do have some false ones to throw some red hair in. So again, if my players talk to people and they ask them various questions, I just want to know a bit of anything, you know, what's going down, I can refer to this. This contains, again, this can uh, just background information. Uh, adventure hooks and so forth so that's good the next thing I have is the actual map of the town uh, we are in threshold in uh, Karamikos 
and I also provide one of these maps for my players. Uh, on mine I have things numbered and colour coded. Players don't, they have to fill it in as they explore. So my numbers then refer to this, where I have different key locations of the town sort of fleshed out. As I said, you probably only want to do this if your players are, you know your players are going to be staying in a town or a region for a while. If they're only there for one or two sessions, this is probably overkill and you can probably just wing it. Uh, I have different things listed, like the town hall here and then inns. Uh, when it comes to the inns, I have a bit of each location has a bit of background information about it, so I can relay, to, relay, relay that to the players. But for inns, I have who the barkeeper is, uh, so I have a name. Who the common patrons are, whether they're actual, if there's an actual individual character in this case, uh, Clifton Caldwell, uh, or what types. So I have merchants and commoners. So if the players are looking for higher adventure, this place probably isn't the best place to go to. I want to go to the Gold Dragon Inn, which I have here. Patrons are commoners and adventurers. I also have what quality the establishment is good, poor, very good, etc. And prices. So if they offer rooms, how much that's going to cost you a night. If they offer stabling services, how much that's going to cost. And then food and drink prices. And if there's any tidbits of information, I have it as a uh, down here. So uh, this attracts the best bards in town apparently so that's just just to help flesh it out and I have this for various different key locations so here at the barracks if there is any general NPCs I have their stat blocks written here written in a very Beck me uh, sort of style so really condensed uh, sometimes modern D&D sort of 4e or 5e maybe even 3e the stat blocks are too big so I really do condense those down uh, just get the bits of, important bits of information that I need for this uh, so that's what that is um, I also I took this from pandius.com uh, uh, this whole section but I will be doing this for every town I come to and that's just the surrounding area so I have the town here and you have details of the surrounding area sometimes there might be a bit of overlap especially going on to here I want to move on to around this region soon or maybe down here soon but anyway there's a bit of overlap which makes your life easier as a DM because you can just cut and paste so forth uh, but this has the surrounding areas so I know if they want to do a bit of exploration in the wilderness where to go uh, I know where they can go and what type of terrain they're going to hit and also here I have information about the terrain type so uh, that makes it easier and if they're any uh, adventure modules when they uh, of interest to the site also write those down there too um, just map repeated um, because this is normally with a hex map you're normally around three miles or six miles per hex whereas this is really really small um, it's not that big so uh, I've got just got a, a map here of a bigger hex overlay over the small hexes just so I can see on the full-size map uh, so that's it for the uh, sort of town and region. You do the town and the surrounding wilderness region around. So I can refer to that. The next section of interest is the uh, adventure. Uh, this is the current adventure that I am running. Now this could be either the full adventure that I've written myself, or it could be notes if I am running a module adventure, uh, and or it could be in this case something completely different. Um, I, this is a, a future adventure because uh, I'm planning to run a an adventure called Trouble in Threshold that was uh, it was a CD adventure and I don't want to use the CD so I've gone through the audio tracks and sort of transcribed the uh, the audio and sort of put what's in here so that's what this is so this will be a mixture of different things really be notes on the adventure I'm running, the adventure itself, or in this case, an audio CD transcribed. But whatever your current adventure is, I put it here. Also, on continuing theme of adventures are sidetracks. Uh, I get the name from Dungeon Magazine. Uh, sidetracks, and in here I do have a couple of photocopies from some uh, Dungeon Magazine sidetracks. Just two, so if my players do something unexpected and wander off, into the wild I have something at least sort of prepared so uh, 
they go up to the mountains here or if they're just going to the wilds here or something and I could also add my own little uh, side quest adventures in here uh, which I think I've currently got stored in the town bit here there's sort of some here that I had stash so I've got to sort that out but they're already run so I don't need to worry too much um, Encounter tables, uh, I only have one, but I am working on them. So what this is, is this is just a random monster table. I've put it as threshold region, but really it's the entirety of, I expanded it over time to be the entirety of Eastern Karamikos. So I also have day and night sections here. So you have forest, open, hills and mountains, and these are special for that region. And so what, I'd look at the region we're in and sort of create different uh, region types, day and night, because obviously I want night time to be more, slightly more dangerous for Eastern Keramikos, uh, a lot more werewolves, vampires and undead coming on at night, because uh, it is effectively Romania, Transylvania isn't it, so uh, I wanted to get that feel across. So whenever I need to roll a random wilderness encounter I shall refer to this. I'm currently working on one for um, Alfhelm sort of the elven place uh, I want a some generic dungeon ones generic town ones just so if I haven't prepared them in my adventure normally if I wanted specific encounter tables it would be in the adventure section but if I don't I can always fall back to it so I'm working on this I just haven't completed it yet next up is travel uh, D&D travel is a bit lame uh, hex maps hex crawls are cool but they're just a tool you need something to spice them up the problem was solved for me in cubicle 7's adventures in middle earth their 5e version of their one ring adventure and what I have here is I've just converted that really to be fitting for my Keramikos setting rather than Middle Earth. And this is just the uh, sort of outline of the steps taken. So one is players plan their roles during the journey. You'd have a guide, scout, hunter and a lookout. And this just tells you what attributes are probably the need. So, you know, if someone's got high wisdom survival, you make them the guide. I then determine the peril rating, and this is based on the terrain, uh, where they're going and how dangerous that terrain is. Uh, you have an embarkment roll, determine the number of journey events, which we'll get to in a minute, and the arrival. So the embarkment is how the players will leave out, leave the journey, whether the weather's going to be good, bad, their mood so forth and this can affect the actual journey here we have the events table for the journey uh, a lot of these are of course random monster encounters but some are different they're just m more interesting so it's not just you meet a bunch of monsters fight them there's all different things you can have uh, a hunt going on here uh, you've come across some old ruins some a camp some wandering merchants traveling merchants it makes it a bit more interesting and of course, if I do encounter wandering monsters, I can refer back to my uh, tables here, of course, so I've got that. And we have the arrival table, and this will give bonuses or penalties to the adventure. Um, one I had was, they it was, I think they, we got arrived in poor spirit, so there was a, uh, a penalty to uh, their sort of... Uh, NPC interaction, but being there on a pretty much a dungeon crawl, that didn't matter. And they got a bonus to their attack rolls because they're in such a bad mood, they were using that in their attack. So, really, it worked out for them having that negative roll on the players. But that's that. Next up, we have uh, characters. Um, first up, I found some uh, cut down character sheets uh, online I still had to rework them a bit so they weren't still totally to my needs so this is sort of a combination of one I found online and I've amended it to suit my needs a bit more and so this is where I put my NPCs in here that the uh, characters may interact with um, what you're going to see next is I'm probably just going to use these now because what I took from the uh, rules encyclopedia uh, rules encyclopedia sorry from Beckme was these DM character cards and these are just to help the DM me in this case keep track of where my players are you know the bonuses the attribute bonuses uh, the current weapons and the damage and what have you uh, but I'm thinking of just using these for them because it's just more tailored I can keep track of spell slots and all this so I can keep track of that just just not too 
check up on them or anything. It just makes my life easier if I need to check what their you know, what their perception is and what their stealth is and what have you. Uh, so there's that. So I'm probably going to be losing this and just using these more. And I also have a full blown character sheet because where I am the uh, permanent DM. I'm not too familiar with the 5th edition character sheet, where I think it is, and I'm, my players are totally new to the game, so sometimes they're still asking questions, oh, where do I look for that? I don't know, because I don't have the character sheet, but if I have one here, I can refer to it. And what I've done here is Theodric, who, if you watch the uh, story videos, you'll know he's an NPC, started off as a small sheet, but where he's becoming more and more a character in his own right, I've expanded him out to have a full sheet. So that's what that's there for. And finally is uh, maps. What all this is, is just more maps of the region and world I'm in. So this is the map of the entirety of the uh, Grand Duchy of Keramikos taken from the expert box set for a copy from there. So we are just in this region here and the uh, map you saw earlier on was just this little small bit here, that little circle. That's all it was really covering here well i suppose a bit more than that but more this sort of area here i'd say then uh also uh i have the greater map of the more of the world so we are down here in karamikos that's threshold here and so it has all the other lands around so we have Elfhelm, uh glantry five shires Darakin and etc etc. Uh, I haven't these aren't used for anything so uh, room for future expansion if I ever need it and back here I just have more pockets and a previously run adventure just waiting to store it somewhere and that is my DM folder yours will probably be different but there might be some sort of ideas here you might wish to take away and utilize uh, each one's going to be tailored to your DM style this suits me fine I can quickly and easily look things up. Um, that is it for this video. Uh, I think the next sort of DM tip video, style video of this nature, will be looking at my uh, DM screen, uh, which is custom made and magnetic. So we shall look into that. That's it for this one. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for patrons for supporting this channel. It means a lot. Um, I've got a load more sort of terrain videos planned, so that's where that money goes to. So thanks for that. Uh, uh, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, share, and all that good, good, good stuff. Until the next video, guys, stay safe and take care.